Uh, thank you very much, Omar. The PPP has been resilient from the day it was established in 1959. Because without the PPP, as I always tell people, we will not be proud to call ourselves Gambians today. Because the British, who colonized us for centuries, decided that Gambia was too small and without resources and couldn't maintain itself as an independent sovereign state. Therefore, there were negotiations taking place for Gambia to be part of Senegal. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, some of the party leaders then agreed to what the British were saying. But our PPP leader, Sadawda Kerba Jawa, refused and challenged them that if they knew the Gambia could not maintain themselves, why did they maintain Gambia as a state up to when Gambians are now requesting their own sovereignty and independence? So fortunately, he was invited by President Azikwe to Nigeria. Namdi Azikwe. Namdi Azikwe. And our first manifesto for the elections of 64, for Gambia independence now, was printed and prepared in Nigeria. And when Saadawda came, the then national president of the party, who was convinced of the colonial opinion, Sanjali Ali Bojang, resigned from the party and joined the United Party. And it is then that the PPP decided to elect Famar Ture yeah. as the national president of the party. Yeah. Therefore, yes. PPP ruled this country when even the British have lost hope that the Gambia can maintain itself. Now, but within a short time after independence, we were able to prove to the world that it is not the smallness or the lack of resources, but the maturity and management of a country that matters. And we turn Gambia into the supermarket of the West Coast. Right. A um, few weeks ago, you and several other ministers, including the Vice President, were relieved of your responsibilities. What did you exactly know about your sacking? To be honest with you, I don't know anything about my, my sacking and uh, my being relieved of my responsibility. Because up to today when I'm talking to you, there has never ever been any communication between the president and myself. I was in parliament, yes. uh, pres uh, going to present myself to the adjournment debate of the members of parliament for issues to be raised in relation to the Minister of Agriculture. When I was called around 12.15 to go and answer to the president, I went to the state house and the secretary general gave me a letter. And when I opened the letter, it was in the letter that I am relieved of my responsibility from the 29th okay. of, July, of, of, of June. 29th of June. So, that, so I just went to my office, parked my few things, and went home. And okay. that's why it ended. Do you have any clue before that you were fired? Do you know that you are going to be fired? Or no, do you have a clue? I had no clue that I was going to be fired because I had a very good uh, working relationship with everybody in cabinet, including the president. Okay, most people said you are fired because you are talking too much. And secondly, you are politicking instead of talking. Yeah, what am I talking about? Am I talking about things... Now, let me put it this way. Let's sorry, say, okay. just allow me. Am I talking about things that are detrimental to the security of the country or that is amenical to the development and progress of this country? Or am I talking because I am a representative of the people and I have a right, yes, you have a right. to speak my mind? Okay, let me, let me put that question in. And I have context. never, no, just let me finish. All right. I have never, within the one year, six months of my being minister, divulged any activity or statements that was agreed in cabinet because I respect my oath of secrecy. You respect your oath of secrecy. So many said you, your sacking was related because, you, like I said, too much talking because you were insisting on Barrow to step down after three years. Many said that was part of the reasons why they were away. Well, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. if they say that, okay. I am one of the luckiest Gambians politically. How? I joined the PPP in 1968, when I was 21 years old. And I contested elections from 1972 and failed. Okay. 
I contested again in 77 and won. And sad out that never, at that small young age, never allowed me to be a backbencher. I was made the Deputy Foreign Minister of the Gambia. And at that age, I used to lead delegation to the United Nations, to the AU, and to the Liberation Committee of the AU. And then in 81, he gave me the big responsibility of establishing a new ministry okay. requested by the uh, summit of the SEALs, heads of states, that because of the drought, every country should, uh, should establish a ministry of water resources, fisheries, forestry, and the environment. And I headed this ministry from 1981 to 89, when I was then moved to agriculture from 89 to 94. Then after the coup, I made sure I stayed at home because I resented coup d'etat from the day Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown by the military. Because I know they are irresponsible and they are the ones that retard the progress of Africa. Because me, I was a die-hard Nkrumahist as a student. So I stayed to fight against the military dictatorship. I went through a lot of difficulties that everybody knew. 22, year, 22 times of imprisonment, torture, lost my eye. But fortunately, I became part and parcel of those also who initiated the coalition. And I played a leading part in bringing an end to this very dictatorship. That's why I said I'm a very lucky Gambian because I never thought during the time of the IJM that I will ever be a minister again in my life. So for you, after Jawara, that you think that was going to be the end of the political life? For example, for example, being a minister in a new government. But I was not going to stop being a politician because I owe it to those people in Sarakunda okay. who made me a member of parliament when it was, the going was nice and I was leading them. So I said when the going is tough also, they should, be, they should see me leading them. That's why I stayed. I had a job with the UN. I had a job with the FAO. I resigned all these jobs to come back and fight the dictatorship that was in Gambia. You joined the cabinet when you were a very young minister, but to many now you are a dinosaur in today's political world. What do you say about that? Yes. I am in PPP because I didn't want the name of the PPP to die. It will be a shame to all Gambians. The party that brought self-government to this country, the party that brought independence to this government, to this country, the party that brought republicanism in this country and made us a sovereign state. The parties in America are three, four hundred years old. Presently in Senegal, the best party of Senghor is the second biggest party. In Ivory Coast, the party of, of Ebuanyi is now in government. In Sierra Leone, the SSPP that founded independence in Sierra Leone is back in government. In Guinea-Bissau, the PIGC of Amica Carbal, why not the PPP? That's why I stayed. Why? To make sure I maintain not only the party, but I have to be very mindful of the role that was played by the founding fathers of the PPP to make Gambia what it is today. You gave example of all these countries where political parties begin and they are still in power. For example, in South Africa, Mandela was in Mandela stepped down, he gave it to Thabo Mbeki. After Thabo Mbeki, we had Halima Mutlanti. After Halima Mutlanti, we had Jacob Zuma. Now, Senator Maposa. Why is it that, why is it so difficult for a PPP to be in power? It's not difficult. It is more or less the transition during the 22 years of Jambi. He knew the powers of the PPP because he was one of the people who always led the front guard when we are going on our farmer's tour. Yeah. Unfortunately, I headed that for, for Sardauda for 13 years, non-stop. And Jame was always there. So what he did was to ban the PPP. And in banning the PPP, he also spent all his energy and resources to win over some of the strong people within the PPP to join the APRC, just to, dis to destroy the base of the PPP. But don't you think some people also said it's because of UDP also part from part of the problem why? Because most of the people of PPP, NCP and other parties left that party because it was difficult for them to resuscitate it. They decided to go into No, it's UDP. not difficult resuscitating. We were banned. 
Yeah, you were banned, but the ban That is why lifted. we told, no, no. The ban was lifted long after the UDP was established. In 1996, when the ban was still on, the first elections, people like me, is on record. I was in detention for 14 months in the army camp in Bakao. And they don't allow any member of my family to see me. But I was able to smuggle three letters. Okay. One to my wife. One to um, Mr. Koka, who was my youth representative in Serekunda. And one to Ganjiture. Tell them, tell all the supporters to support the UDP because our party is born, banned. But we have to participate in the elections. And then, after it was lifted in 2001, we re-established our party. But the ban was lifted in August. And the elections was in September or in November. I was one of those who led the team of the PPP to the selection committee, chaired by Hassan Musa Kamara. When most of the parties that came there wanted Sirif Diba to be the flag bearer, I put, my, I put my foot down and said, I'm going to support Usainu Dabo. Because fortunately, he was the one who contested in 96 when we were all born, uh, banned. Yeah. And having from August to November, we as the other parties will not have the time to revive our parties, reconstruct it, and go into elections. Now, why can't we go into an alliance? Support Usainu in condition that he will serve for five years. Mm -hmm. After the five years, he'll step down and allow other parties to compete. That's how he, he became the 2001 uh, 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 candidates. Now, I will take you out of that thing. Now we move on. Since you were dismissed by President Baro, have you spoken to him? No, we have not. So what is the state of relations between you and Baro as we speak? Well, there is no, for me, I, I'm, I'm sitting in my home doing my own things, running my political activities. He's sitting in the state house doing his job as a president. Do you in any way feel being betrayed for being sacked as a minister? No, I don't feel betrayed. What I feel is that the, the spirit and letter of the coalition has been undermined, particularly with the advent of the removal of the vice president. For me, removing me, I've been minister for 14 years under on, on Jawara and one and a half years. How many Gambians has really enjoyed 15 and a half years of ministership in this country? That's what I said. I said we went onto a coalition and we have agreements written in black and white with committees that should be there during campaign, during elections, and after elections. And one of them was to advise the president on the establishment of the cabinet, yeah. the mode of the cabinet, and any major decision for him to call the meeting, come of the committee, for advice. This didn't take place. That's why I said he is there because of the coalition. Without the seven parties and the three independents, he could never have been in the state house. No one party could have removed Jammeh. And this is historic. It has happened. Parties have contested in 1996. They lost. Mm -hmm. They contested in 2001 and lost. They contested in 2006 and lost. They contested in 2011 and lost. We only won because we were a coalition. That is why he's in cabinet, in, in state house. And he's in state house not because of a party, because the condition was he has to resign from his party. Do you that is why he resigned from his party okay. and contested as an independent candidate. Now, you said you, don't, you are not that much bothered, <laughs> if I may put it that way, about your dismissal. But kind of, kind of bothered about your, your aunt, right? Yes. Why that? Why not you but your because aunt? Because I saw the role he played, she replayed, in bringing us together. And because of her also international profile, and being a lady, she was serving in a lot of capacities for her international image. And I think also, as chairperson of the executive of the coalition, mm -hmm. who brought us all together, has, this lady has a unique position in the coalition for the transition to the end of the coalition. That's what I said. Okay. That for me, I think this was one person who, served, who should have been allowed to serve the transition period, then she could have been removed after the transition. If she wished to contest as president or she wished to retire, that is left to her. So, many, uh, for example, let's put it this way she should be in the 
government until the transition ends. Yes. You don't know, I don't know why she was removed, right? Yes, but in the event that there must be a motive by the president, did you find out why that happened? Or even if he does wrong, do you think she should be there for her contribution uh, for bringing coalition leaders together? As I said, in any coalition, we have seen in Senegal, the coalition is going to 10 years now. What is stopping us as responsible, matured leaders? Then we as coalition leaders, if we see something going wrong, why can't we not sit and discuss it? That's what I'm saying. So as far as you are concerned, if there was something wrong, let us discuss it. The best thing for the president is for the coalition support. executive. And we discuss it. I will never ever support anybody to continue being in that cabinet if she or he or she flouts principles that will not allow that person to serve as a minister. Because for me, Gambia is more important than being a minister. Gambia is more important to me than any person or any group of people put together. Now, are you still part of the coalition? I'm still part of the coalition because my party is still part of the coalition. In the event that President Baru decides to ex overstretch his tenure in office, what are you going to do? Are you going to form another coalition for other people to boot him out of office? At the end of the three years, I will make my declaration that this is the end of the coalition. Because I was really privileged to be the few. Not only to be part of this establishment of the coalition, but when we were taking President Adam Barrow as a candidate around the country to look for votes for them to elect, Halifa Salah, Dr. Isaiah and myself were the only ones who took, her, who took him around. And for every meeting, Halifa, Dr. Toure, myself, and President Adam Barrow, make sure we emphasize the three years yes. agreed by the court. It's on record. It's on tape. Why should I change my mind when I have a contract with the Gambian people for three years? All those who have changed their mind are leaders in this country and in Africa and the world have seen what has happened. Hussein Odabo said, I asked him, I had a similar interview with him, and he's, I asked him whether he is going for three or five. He said he's going for five years because that's what is stipulated in the Constitution. Did you guys in any way put at the back of your mind that, that you had an agreement, but the Constitution supersedes whatever agreements you have? Because they were, he was like, it is not even called, you have elections in presidential election 2016. In 2017, you have the parliamentary elections. And 2018, you have local government and so on. So if you want to go to another election again, he said, why are Gambians so obsessed with the election? So uh, no. regarding my that question. No, it's unfortunate. What is unfortunate? For us to say obsessed with elections. Yes. This is Theresa May yeah. was elected for five years. Within two years, he went back to elections. We have seen people going to election within one year is respecting the dignity and principles of what you stand for. That's what is important. For me, when it comes to five years, yeah. why can't we sit down and consult with legal experts for us to come out with an acceptable formula to see how best we can respect the contract that we signed with the Gambian people? That is my intake on this. What I'm saying is, Hussein Udabo alone cannot stand and say five years. Mm -hmm. The constitution, I'm told, gave the president the right to resign and to dissolve parliament. And we go to, as they tell me, I don't know what is right, to go by 90 days. And so many other things. Why can't we, as this is the contract between the coalition and the Gambian people, even if this is right, what he's saying, what has stopped us from calling the executive or the coalition and discussing it, mm -hmm. the pros and the cons, involve independent um, legal experts for us to make sure we arrive at an acceptable, responsible coalition conclusion so that everybody will be happy. I will, we will continue with this discussion, but I will have to shift you somewhere and bring you back. Okay. You took uh, Kerfatu to court. Yes. Uh, for, as you put it, defamation and so on, uh, the, involving the fertilizer scandal. That's right. 
I don't want to belabor that point. But another thing emerged. They accuse my co-host, mm -hmm. Sister the Afaru Kamara, of being behind you, pushing you to take a legal action against Kerfatu. Is that the case? Is that true? Or That's not true? true. And then, unfortunately, since Fatu Kamara came, we have only been meeting in public. And unless when he rang me to say, you people are coming and you want me to come here for an interview. Anybody who tells you that Fatu Kamara is against me, then they don't know me. For me, yeah. if nobody could have manipulated me during the time of Jawara when I was very young, not to talk about when I'm very old and ready to go to my grave, I am taking this people to court on principle. I was tormented, tortured. Mm -hmm. My family, during the time of Yai Jammeh, I thought it's finished. But people to come and accuse me of signing a contract with a businessman for monetary gains. I have family. I have friends. I have kids. I think I have to clear myself because I need to go out politics with a clean slate, with some dignity. This is right. Because as I said, as long as your right stops where my right begins. And when we talk about freedom of press, the press, anybody who is responsible and you are in any profession, one thing you should do is to uphold and protect and defend the ethics of that profession and not to use it to undermine, defame, and destroy characters of people unfairly. Now, this, you want to do this as kind of a vindication to show people. But this is the court. How about if they prove that what they allege or what they say saying that who, they who are sad not approve, they approve that what they accuse you of is true. Yeah, it's not them, it's not them. That's the court. That's why I'm going to the court. So someone They said I have signed a contract. Yeah. Let them bring the contract we have signed. They said I'm having monetary gains. Let them please tell them where, when, and how much I'm being paid. That's all I want. Something I'm, ac I'm ready to accept the decision of the court. Okay. So, let me take you back to another political thing. Some said you have a political presidential ambition. Do you? Never in my life. So why didn't I've you... already declared that in my lifetime, I will never ever contest elections anymore. I've contested elections enough. I said, as I was assisted at the age of 21 to be who I am now, I'm going to make sure my party brings in young people. I help them. We set up our Congress, elect a young person to be the leader of the party, and I will be behind that person to help that person so that the party will be what it is before. Because there are young people in this country who can do far better than me, far educated than me. Why can't we not give them the chance? The problem with Africans is we refuse to accept when we should retire. Let me give you a little break. I will take a short break when we come. We kind of move on. So, viewers, we are, I am here with the former Agriculture Minister Omar Amadou Jalo. Um, we are discussing his relief from his dismissal from the cabinet, the, um, the fertilizer scandal, and so on. So, I will take a short break. When I come back, we continue with him. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm going to replace my Africel 3G SIM card. Why use a 3G SIM card when you have a 4G phone? Replace your 3G SIM card today for the real Africel 4G SIM and receive one gigabyte of internet data for free. Really? Yes, get one gigabyte for free just by replacing your SIM card at any Africel outlet. With no loss of contact, the cost of bundle from the 3G SIM card is the same for the 4G SIM. And guess what? With the 4G SIM card, you can also connect to the 3G network as well. This is so cool. I'll replace my 3G SIM card right away to the real 4G SIM and receive my very own one gigabyte for free. From AfriCell, it's always real and it's for free. Where AfriCell goes, oh, oh, no one has the speed to follow. Hi viewers, my name is Jaka Sisijete. I'm here at Cooperative to get the opinions of individuals regarding the President's nationwide tour. Let's look for individuals to have their opinion. Well, uh, 
Um, Dito is a very, is very good, as 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 it, as it used to happen before. Uh, well, the president, for me, it is a, it is, a, it is a important thing, you know, to emphasize, you know, to go out to meet the people, know about their, their difficulties, you know. Uh, well, uh, concern about agriculture, as we know, agriculture is a backbone of every country, you know. So to help the farmers, you know, it will be very good farmers to see a president come know, to know their problem and solve it for them, because farming also is not easy, you know. Likewise, um, you you spend the whole rainy season farming. At the end of the day, you cultivate your crops, you know. So to so to, to buy to buy the to, to buy is a, is a very difficult, you know. Spending your money, spending everything, you know what I'm saying. At the end of the day, the money that you're spending, you don't get it back. So I know it is a good tour. So I want the president to help the farmers. You know, let the farmers be happy. If the farmers are happy. The country will be happy. Come like a foot of farm Dobab. Okay, it's a good idea. But yeah, I don't expect. I may expect. I expect more than because province is small for many along the Dobal Bedi. But I'm back. I'm in Sama Sita. The Dobal Bedi. I'm not just no. I'm not just doing the work. I'm 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 very happy about that. He's going to the village, seeing many people. It's nice. So they will also uh, want what the president will do. They will tell the president. So I think it's good. For me, I'm very happy about it. So we will see many changes by grace of God. Yeah, it's, well, it's a very good move, you know, because, you know, I'm a president going to a tour, meeting the people is very important, you know. That's the time that, you know, he will actually know the problem of the people. And after knowing the problem of the people, maybe he will, it will be sorted out. Yeah, that is, you know, um, if he visited people after knowing their problem already, what I am expecting from him, that is, you know, let, let, let that one be sorted out, let him sort out the problem of the people, you know, this is what I am expecting from him. This was it, viewers, you've heard from the people and you've known their opinions. Uh, this is Jaka from Fatu Network. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm going to replace my Africel 3G SIM card. Why use a 3G SIM card when you have a 4G phone? Replace your 3G SIM card today for the real Africel 4G SIM and receive one gigabyte of internet data for free. Really? Yes, get one gigabyte for free just by replacing your SIM card at any Africel outlet. With no loss of contact, the cost of bundle from the 3G SIM card is the same for the 4G SIM. And guess what? With the 4G SIM card, you can also connect to the 3G network as well. This is so cool. I'll replace my 3G SIM card right away to the real 4G SIM and receive my very own one gigabyte for free. From AfriCell, it's always real and it's for free. Where AfriCell goes, oh, oh, no one has the speed to follow. Welcome back, viewers. I am Omar Wali and I'm here with the former Agriculture Minister Omar Amadou Jallo, who is also the leader of the PPP party. Well, Mr. Jallo, let's talk about the leak audio of Jame and the executive of APRC. Uh, that is circulating on the social, on WhatsApp, I can say. What do you make of this audience? Before going, did you listen to it? I listened to it and I was shocked. Okay. As I said, I was one person who is championing national reconciliation. Okay. And I said, I've forgiven Jame what all what he has done to me. But I was not expecting any sane Gambian. I mean, any sane Gambian to try to wish Jame to come back to this country. The revelations that are taking place in the commissions about the money, the secondary, the billions and billions of dollars mismanaged and squindled by Jammeh, to me is secondary. But somebody who shot 14 students one morning and went to parliament to pass an indemnity act to indemnify those who slaughtered those kids. Why is... Uh, the people who are taking from the prison and saying they were going to transfer them to, to Joy Town. Yeah. This man, uh, the former NIA Director General. There were many. I don't know. Which That's one. right. Uh, this uh, Daba Marina. Daba Marina, okay. And his group. Yeah. If you are taking senior security personnel yes. from a prison to another prison, why are those who are guarding them? Why is the vehicle? Why is this place? Okay. Kanjiba uh, Kanyi, Kanji yeah. 
He was arrested with his younger brother from their home, brought to the police, NIA, and the brother was left since 2006. Chief Money, the NIA came to the observer office, yes. to the managing director office, Sajar Tal, and the managing director led them to Chief Money's office. He was arrested. Sajar Jisajo Kujabi of Buyam and Dongombu and Mulaminyasi, they were taken from their farms, arrested, taken to their home to change their clothes. And up to today, yeah. we didn't see them. What about uh, Deira Haider? Shot. And then, of course, these nine or eight people who were taken from the prison, they were not executed. They were murdered. And one of them, Lamin Dabo, should never have been part of that group, even if there was legality. But right. it's illegal. Because Lamin Dabo committed the crime in 85 during the time of Sadauda. Sadauda committed the system, the, the sentence to life. We went to parliament in 1992 and abolished the death sentence. Why, that, why should that man be killed in 2012? And so many others. For us to sit down now and have people who have kids, who are Gambians, who are human, to think that that same man who committed all those atrocities and so many others should come back to this country and lead, I am baffled. We, before I push you, you talk about the execution in 2012. Many said Jame borrowed the toolbox from your government, that is the PPP, because in 1981, Mustafa Danso was executed. Mm -hmm. They said there could have been a better things that you could have deal with it than executing. But Jame came when those people were in, uh, executed in 12, 2012. Mm -hmm. There were reports. Jame said they were sh it was firing squad. We later re received reports that it was a lethal injection. Mm -hmm. But the confession by a jungler said most of them were strangled. Strangled. Thank so, you very much. I will say about the Danso. Yes. Jawara in 29 years executed only one person. This man killed his commander, Ekumahoni. He was sentenced to death and Sadada committed the sentence to life. In 81, he was freed from the prison and went and killed six other people. That's why he was the only one ever under the PPP regime who was executed. He was a menace to society. As somebody who killed a person, your commander, illegally, condemned to death, the president committed to life. You were freed by a rebel. You went and killed six people. What do the people expect? There is this saying that an eye for an eye might end up making the whole world blind. That's why. So that was a justification. So it was necessary. Not, it was not an eye for an eye because there were some other people who were arrested who killed people, but they were not sentenced to that. And the Sadaw they made sure nobody during the 81 coup was in prison for more than 10 years. You cannot compare the era of Sadawda and uh, Yajame. 11 November, I was the one of the only civilian detainees who went there the 11 November 1994 massacre when they killed over 34 Gambians. Some of them were stripped naked and shot and left there for 48 hours. People were passing them. I was in detention. Then all the orders that I have said were all during the time of Yajame and orders that are not known that are now coming to life, that he was responsible so for their murders. That's why the time you said a soldier broke her eye. That's right. Which one, left or right? The, right, left, the left eye. I have to go to Ghana to repair it. But it's working now. I now it's working, know. yes. That's why I'm putting, putting on this, this class. Did you miss anything, you know, for being a minister? No. As I said, human beings should accept faith. I was born in a village called Old Yundu. Unfortunately, I was born in a mud house. My father was not rich. I'm the seventh child of my father and the fourth child of my mother. Who am I to claim that all the honor, the position that I've held, I know it came from prayers from my parents and from God. I will accept anything that comes to my life 
That is why I stayed. And people try to convince me to leave this country, to go and your jobs overside. I have eight kids in Europe and America, all of them comfortably settled. I refuse to go because I owe it to my country. You said you are not vying or interested in any political office. Is it that you are not popular enough to be president or to win a presidential election? Everybody knows that among all the politicians now in Gambia, I know this Gambia more than all of them. Right. I worked with the Cooperative Society Movement from 1966 to 1972 as a corporate inspector. I was posted to Sami, to Badibu, to Salu, to Fonyi, to Nyomi, and to Joytown. And then from there, I became Minister of Water Resources and the Environment. Right. Dealing with farmers. And before that, after I failed my uh, election in 72, I was employed by the Commerce and Development Bank. We established it. They sent me to Ghana to do a diploma in development financing with emphasis on agriculture. I was dealing with farmers. Then I came to water resources yeah. and to agriculture. Not, uh, for me, I am not in politics just for position. That's why I always tell people. I'm in politics to serve my country. So now, if tomorrow Barrow returned from the nationwide tour and said, I want to get you back to the ministry, will you accept? I don't think so. Why? Well, why should he? You just said that you are not into politics because of whatever you put in interest or so. But if he decided that, less, yes, this thing happened, it happens in other parts of the world, let me bring you back. Why will you not accept? Yeah, it's different here. Okay. Okay, now, in our Gambian context, if he decides to take you back, will you accept? As I said, I will not accept any job in this government anymore. No. Because, no, okay. I have a reason. Right. Because... There was nothing between me and him that he can call me and discuss issues with me that he thought were not being done in the right way. That's what Jawara used to do. As a president, you can call any of your ministers right. and discuss with them if you feel they are not doing what you expected of them. And after two, three times, and they are still doing it, you can remove them. But for me now, after all what has gone, for me to be called again, no, no, no. I am not in politics to be minister. Okay. I am in politics to serve my country. And that service can be done in different forms. As a member of parliament, as a cabinet minister, as a party leader, or even as a member of an ordinary party. And that's what I'm going to do. I'll still continue participating in the national development of this country through my party. So now, what next for OJ Chalo? Really, to be honest with you, my ambition now and vision for me to retire From is to make sure okay. the PPP holds its Congress by the end of the year, okay. select the new leadership, and I'll be happy to sit there and, and be an advisor to the leadership. We will very soon close down this interview but let me just take a short break again when we come i will allow you to go so listeners viewers i am here with the former agriculture minister omar amadou jalo we will take a short break when we come back i'll continue with him hey what are you doing here I'm going to replace my Africel 3G SIM card. Why use a 3G SIM card when you have a 4G phone? Replace your 3G SIM card today for the real Africel 4G SIM and receive one gigabyte of internet data for free. Really? Yes, get one gigabyte for free just by replacing your SIM card at any Africel outlet. With no loss of contact, the cost of bundle from the 3G SIM card is the same for the 4G SIM. And guess what? With the 4G SIM card, you can also connect to the 3G network as well. This is so cool. I'll replace my 3G SIM card right away to the real 4G SIM and receive my very own one gigabyte for free. From AfriCell, it's always real and it's for free. Where AfriCell goes, oh, oh, no one has the speed to follow. Hello viewers, my name is Fatou Sana from Fat Network. We are here at Westfield today to know the opinion of people regarding the leaked conversation between the ex-president Jamba and some of the APRC members. Uh, 
going around and about to know the opinion of people and what they think about the conversation between the President Jambe and some of the APRC members. President Jambe Gambian la warna am right pour wa jisuma si lu bon dal joxe audio dal joxe audio rek fogu mané lu bon mu ci warna wa pour fans ami mu muna joxe fans ami confidence amna right bobu nonu pour wa jisuma si lu ay de bigo su nekké equatorial guinée warna wa pour ñom fa warna joxe advice comme ñom fa bakari tombo njata ñom ñu ngi ci ganaaw comme ñom légui ñom ñoy député parti leader bi gisu ma selo ay dal mom 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 parti bi so gisé té ñu né APAC yalla ak yaay jëm mom 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 parti bi well i think uh, sometimes people want to make uh, they want to build mountains out of small things i think president jamé is still a gambian no matter what and then he has uh, his uh, rights and then he also has his views to issues and then um, i think uh, in my opinion whatever is transpiring within the APRC uh, is still indicating that um, the party cannot do without jammy that is that is that is um, kind of evident you know and then you can also sense some kind of um, you know instability within the party and then um, uh, finally what i have to say is like the party is going to be short lived no matter how they try it because such kind of infights where they, wherever um, they happen to start the end result is division division is imminent i think i could see that i know no no i think um, you know as i said before gambian self fund of making uh, uh, you know mountains out of small things you know I, 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 to me there is no kind of you know criminality in that jammy is still a gambian no matter what no matter what he did he came to the throne as a gambian he, remember he was first enrolled into the army as a gambian and no country would enroll strangers into your army so no matter what happens until the court of law decides on jammy he is still a gambian he, and he to me yes he's right to i mean to speak to his supporters i could tell you outrightly i have never been a, an an aprc supporter never but the truth is the truth so this 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 is i don't think if anyone body was to criminalize that i think you just want to overdo things come audio to modo bi je asi keno fenti men si betia modo bi asi keno fenti men betia no pour mes hommes ndol ka ke natra a manke truti mol ma understand asi keno ay problem mo kriti bar natra manke woti o manke problem to so ya jamme banko dingle mati wato me na fondi data da be toro jine so still now ka communication so ta nala molu ma je comme un problème ti comme patio ñi nte nga je ko be patio mo le bulu mo mi yalon ko nati banko ñi kan so fo moy so do mi yalon ko anyanta ka patio taman bala te banta je comme ka patio ñi lidi jang nte nga je ko tuma do be ko leala fo mo si so do mem be tar la patio ñi ko na gambia banko ka jang ni gambia la constitution so nta patio ñi ala enitina ba kela so that they can go and do that comme nte nga men jodoro fem fe natra loi ya accept gambia la constitution o ya je ko asi kenole o manke problem de ba fem fe natra be loi bantala ndu ate banko ma koy la pour security anin tenku ko do ba jala ko ma mul ma nyana o alawle sa ko do waye japp na ne yaay jamme gambien la africain la bon ci deuk bi la deuk ak fu mën demit gambia lay représenter fam nek donc warna meuna am xalat parce que ay mbokam ñu ngi fi ay xaritam ay andi jamam mi ngi fi kon warna meuna am xalat wax ko ci dekk bi pour man ya jamé yakarna nekul ko xamantene bi dafa dekk yow mal xiyam ci continent yi ak continent afrique la dekk bon di africain don ak pan africanisme kay amna droit wax ci waxuma la gambia mais afrique amna droit wax ci xalatam pour man well we was that is all we have for you today from fire network and we all heard from the people they gave their opinion they will come your way again next time thank you Hey, what are you doing here? I'm going to replace my Africel 3G SIM card. Why use a 3G SIM card when you have a 4G phone? Replace your 3G SIM card today for the real Africel 4G SIM and receive 1 gigabyte of internet data for free. Really? Yes, get 1 gigabyte for free just by replacing your SIM card at any Africel outlet with no loss of contact. The cost of bundle from the 3G SIM card is the same for the 4G SIM. And guess what? With the 4G SIM card, you can also connect to the 3G network as well. This is so cool. I'll replace my 3G SIM card right away to the real 4G SIM and receive my very own 1 gigabyte for free. Welcome back. I am Omar Wali and still here with the former agriculture minister Omar Amadou Jallo who is also the leader of the PPP party. Uh, Mr. Jallo kept here for a very long time now. No, it's okay. 
What is the state of relations in between you and Hussein Udabo? Well, I always tell people that Hussein is my friend and in my in-law. Yes. We sat in the same class in high school from one from one to from five eight six years, sixty one to sixty six. Then the first wife is my sister's daughter. Right. So our relationship is good personally. What I would just want to tell people is, everybody knows me, even during the IGMS time when I was being tortured. You see me in some activities of supporters of the APRC. For me, party politics don't interfere with my personal relation with people. Because as I said, religion is more difficult than politics. Okay. And my first friend in life, up to today, is a Catholic. And we are still the best of friends. On Sunday, he goes to his church, come we have lunch. On Friday, I go to my mosque and we have come and have lunch. Go be UDP, APRC, NCP, DOI. For me, they are all equal to me. We are all Gambians. We are talking about the same country. We all want to move this country forward. We only have our different options. Let the people decide. Let us go and sell our programs. But for me, Usainu is my brother, is my friend, and is my in-law. We have no personal problem. The belief among most of your critics is that they said you still have, you still don't have that mafia lifestyle. What do you say to them? Like the way you have, you were seen doing things which they felt or feel is abnormal of, like you told us last time at the press conference. What do you say to your critics? Like what? Like Let dancing, me give an example of. Like dancing with women. Oh, yes. Yes. So I want you to elaborate on that. For, for people, I think there's small mindedness. I was not the only one who danced. That's what's parochial. At that place, that's why I said that. Mm -hmm. People identified me and just tried to tarnish my image. The last dancing they spoke on these uh, social networks, I was with the first lady. Right. We were all dancing. Why didn't they picture the first lady? I was there with the ambassador, who is now the foreign minister. He was dancing with me. Why didn't they bring it? I was there with the ambassador in Washington and so many other people. But because they just want to tarnish or mess. But I tell them, up to today, I go to nightclubs. Really? I love dancing. And I will continue dancing. What I'm saying is, recently, I've seen on social media, Maki Sala and the president of France yeah. dancing with their wives. When I was a member of parliament, everybody knows that. Every year, I call Yusundur here and invite President Jawara and the first lady, the speaker, and all those people, and we dance. And then, every year, you watch on, on the international networks, the king of Mecca, their tradition requires that everybody who has a royal, royal blood, blood yeah. has to dance. And they dance. What is wrong with OJ Child dancing? So I will continue to dance. Mm -hmm. And Saturdays I go to the club, let them come there and meet me there. That's my life. <laughs> Nobody can change my life. Okay. I enjoy myself. So what type of dancing will you do? Because they say you will continue to dance. I, will, I do the local dance. Okay. Then tama, you, you, you saw when we won, it was on the social media. <laughs> yes. When we won, I do the tama because when I was being christened as a child, they used the tama and the sabbath. Why should I downgrade my culture for a foreign culture? When you go to the clubs, it's European dancing. That's the one they respect. For me, ask them in Serekunda, I always have my Gesset team. When I'm going to a rally, I'm led by the Gesset. At that time, and I dance my guess it, to the seat where I'm sit, and I will continue doing the same thing. I am born a Gambian and an African. We have a culture. I respect my culture. If some people think that they, because of position or because of what they are, they don't respect their culture, the prophet is far better than OJ. Mm -hmm. Why did Aisha want to watch dancing? She could, and the prophet has to come and taught her yeah. for two hours to watch dancing. Yes, Who is OJ? As far as Oje Jalo is concerned, I'm enjoying myself. Dancing is a farm in your culture. It's a identity. part of me. Everybody knows that in Serekunda, since in the time of uh, Hadi Taban and all those people. I'm still on it. It seems you don't have a very stressful life. No, never. Why? Everybody knows that. Even in prison, I'm the most jovial. Why that? I still have now one of my best friends. When I was put on the security wing, okay. where they took all those nine people, right. I spent 41 days there. In the morning, they open us at 8 o'clock, we queue to the toilet. Mm -hmm. From the toilet, we queue to the bathroom. 9.30, they lock us up again till tomorrow morning at 8. This Nigerian man said, hey, Mr. Jalo, 
They said, you are a minister. I said, for 14 years. He said, are you are happy here? I said, am I better than you? Or am I better than anybody here? We are all born the same thing. And when we die, we're going to be buried the same way. Wherever am I, I'm happy. Because I know it is because of God's destiny that I'm there. Because I've not faulted anybody. I've not committed a crime. Somebody thinks what I'm saying or what I'm doing, he doesn't like. He put me in prison. That's his business. I'll continue saying what I'm saying and doing what I'm doing. You are somebody who's critical of Barrow's offer strategy in his time in office. Now, if he wants to go for another five years... What, what do you mean another five years? For example, if he wants to go uh, two years after the, he exhausted the three years, as agreed by the coalition, what... what, what That's what I'm saying. Yeah. For me, the coalition stops at three years. Because I was the one who led him to the provinces. Okay. And I was the one who is part and parcel of those who had that contract with the Gambian people. Mr. Jalo, I've taken too much of your time, but if you bear with me, I will just take a one shot. What is trending on the social media? Come back to you. We draw the curtain. Okay. Well, we'll uh, listeners, uh, we'll go back to Mar uh, viewers Q with Mariam Sise. When I come back, I continue with the, we conclude the interview. Hey, what are you doing here? I'm going to replace my official 3G SIM card. Why use a 3G SIM card when you have a 4G phone? Replace your 3G SIM card today for the real official 4G SIM and receive one gigabyte of internet data for free. Really? Yes, get one gigabyte for free just by replacing your SIM card at any official outlet. With no loss of contact, the cost of bundle from the 3G SIM card is the same for the 4G SIM. And guess what? With the 4G SIM card, you can also connect to the 3G network as well. This is so cool. I'll replace my 3G SIM card right away to the real 4G SIM and receive my very own 1 gigabyte for free. From AfriCell, it's always real and it's for free. Where AfriCell goes, oh, oh, no one has the speed to follow. Hello, lovely viewers. Welcome back to Viewers TV with Maria MCC. Alia on today, ex First Lady Zainab tweeted and she said, APRC traders, licking audio of discussions with my husband. We are not dumb to think our future would be any bright. Lord save him from jam a five-star hotel. On the other hand, Ansu Sisa tweeted and he said, My one-time good friend Yankuba Kuli denied being an associate with hashtag Jame at the hashtag Jame Commission, yet Jame dished him out of 10,000 USD for his personal users. But as Jame claimed in the leaked audio, if you betray your country, God will betray you too. Where is the money, Yanks? Time newspaper also posted and they said, President Donald Trump blames USA foolishness for poor relations with Russia. On the other hand, on Facebook, Gambia News Online posted and they said, A snob to Gambia. Somari plays for Malaysian's naturalization. Gambia poor has made a come and get me plea, wishing to play for Malaysia's national team. Talk of the attacker committee, his international allegiance to Satis Asian country has been on for over two years. Malaysia has a tough stance of not including non-Malaysians in its national team. The case, however, with Mohammed seems a bit different after he would stay there for over 12 years. The 23 years old is one of the Malaysian superstar legends. Best attack, but the country's FA has a caution approach towards foreign players. On the other hand, uh, BBC Sport uh, posted on Twitter and they said, we want to hear from you. One, give us your moment of the 2018. Two, give us your lineup of what the England team will look like at 2022 World Cup on its basics that they qualified. And also, congratulations to French team for winning the World Cup. Thank you very much for watching. This is VUSD with Mariam CC. And don't forget to like us on Facebook with the same title. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more. Tough Africa Global is pleased to launch Dalaba Housing Estate. Dalaba Housing Estate is our newest estate located on the Sukuta Jabang Road. You can buy a finished two or three bedroom house or service plots accompanied with a free fence and gate. At Dalaba Housing Estate, you get to enjoy bituminized roads, gated and fenced properties, solar street lights, water reticulation, public amenities, 1,500 fruit trees aligned in streets and many more. Make a 40% down payment today and spread balance conveniently for 10 years with GD Bank Ecobank. Trust Bank. Terms and condition apply. Wait, this is the best part. We are giving a discount on outright payments. For more information and exceptional service, please call our